Hello, nerds, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon right here on Mistletine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Welcome back, guys. Uh, hey, thank you so much. This is like episode 34 or 35 of this. Absolutely crazy. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It is a pleasure hanging out with you guys, and you are just, you guys are just the bee's knees. Uh, in the last episode, Lloyd, after we defeated the Divine Dragon, Lloyd revealed himself to be a wingly. He saved Wink from another Wingly, the young Bardell brother, and uh, that allowed him some audience with Queen Teresa, which he then kidnapped and brought to the Tower of Flanvel uh, to get the Moon Mirror. Uh, and our job now is to pursue him, but first we have to go through Kashua Glacier. Uh, so I, let's get started. Um, Kashua Glacier is a a very water-centric area. All of the enemies, most of the enemies anyways, except for two uh, that you will fight are actually water-based. So this is a wonderful time to equip Dart with his Heat Blade. If you sold it, don't worry. There's one as soon as you get in Kashua Glacier. Uh, also, you could go and stock up on some... Uh, I'm actually going to sell some items real quick, but you could go it to back to Fueno, I believe is the closest place you could go to, and buy some Burnouts for a boss fight that we're going to be dealing with over over there if that's something that you're interested in if you're worried about it or or anything like that all right so yeah you could go stock up on burnouts uh and that is a really easy way of dealing with the boss that we will find in kashua glacier uh but my thought is we haven't really seen our dragoons in a while do anything cool uh so i feel like we need to show them off a little bit and especially show off dart so i'm gonna be re relying actually on dart uh, for this boss fight and not on Miranda. I, I think Miranda shined a little bit too much in the last episode, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, also, uh, this area right here is the new path that leads us to Kashua Glacier. The reason why I'm pausing to show this is because if you are using an analog stick, it's actually very, very difficult to use the correct path. Um, this is one of the only times in the game where I have to use the D-pad to actually, like, get onto this path. I just wanted to point that out. Yes. Gosh. Moonstrike! Oh my god, I actually got Moonstrike! Oh, finally! What a cool... I love that addition. It's so cool. Anyways, <laughs> I just... Listen, I just wanted to show that I was able to get Moonstrike, alright? So now you guys can't doubt... Can't doubt my power! Except for every other addition that I miss. Anyways, uh, we want to head to Kashua Glacier, which is right over here. We actually saw this, like, super early. We knew that this place was here. We just didn't know how to get there. And this, my friends, is how you get there. To the icy snow. Mi Miru's gotta be so damn cold. What a cold place. It pierces through my aged bones. It is a land where the earth is eternally covered under ice. I understand that it must be harsh on someone who has never been here. Darn, I'm totally dying. Do you often visit such a place, Miranda? Oh, <laughs> she fell. It's been a while since I came all the way here. But... I would often come here to find solace for my loneliness. You've got such a kind mother like Queen Teresa. How could you have a lonely time? Her Majesty Teresa is not my birth mother. My true birth mother abandoned me. After that, I met Her Majesty Teresa. Her Majesty Teresa cherished me when I was alone as if I were her real daughter. Since then, I've never felt loneliness again. Well, now you're with us, Miranda, and you aren't lonely. Uh, so I I wanna I wanna uh, point out that that uh, Queen Teresa's daughter, my friends, is Princess Lufia, from from the Phantom Ship. Just just thought I'd point that out. Um, so you know. Interesting. Anyways, we can grab an item right here, which is a, a Thunderbolt, uh, which is a magic item. Of course, we've seen it before. Not that big of a deal. Oh, where am I going? Also, there, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of slide because the place is icy. I, I think that's so cool. Anyways, we will get into a random encounter. There it is. And I can actually go over some of the enemies that we'll find, depending of which enemy, of course, that we actually do find right here. Let's see, and we get a Freeze Knight, which is, of course, a water-based enemy, 360 health. I also equipped the Heat Blade real quick onto Dart, so he'll be able to do... Oh, whoa, what the heck did I just do a... These guys aren't hard by any means. None of the random encounters 
really are that oh imagine if i would have got it again sorry i distracted myself uh so they'll use some ice based attacks that will hurt but it's okay it's not it's not that big of a deal now the freeze knight does have an eight percent chance of dropping fatal blizzard the attack that it actually just used on us and it also has a very very high encounter uh counter rate and we got cool boogie cool boogie what a cool name of an addition i love it and of course we didn't get anything to drop right there which is too bad for us now there's actually nothing here that random encounters are going to give us that are like a huge deal uh there are some things that we get really early uh like a like like half a disc early uh but nothing dramatic right there we can get a heat blade which is uh which is great if you if you like i said if you sold yours earlier well now you get another one all right let's head up here and we get a new enemy the mammoth this thing gets get 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 get, get this has 1280 health earth based so of course the heat blade that i just equipped isn't going to do anything uh and it has an eight percent chance of dropping something called the stunning hammer which sounds obviously like it would be a weapon for meru it is not it is an item that we can use to afflict uh, to afflict the stunned status that's it it's a status affliction move and let's see did we end up getting no we did not 132 experience though not too bad actually the highest experience you can find here in this area this is not a very good place though to level up and i i wouldn't really recommend it anyways we want to head up here okay see that we can find like a there's another chest how do we get that chest we got to run all the way around here but there's another one right there oh yeah we can grab that no problem look at oh i'm slip sli slip sliding we i won't do that again meteor fall which is another uh obviously another magic attack item that we can use and we find yet another new enemy this is the icicle ball which meaning we're only missing two enemies so far here uh and i'm sure we'll run into them i have no doubts God, I'm nailing that cool boogie every time, which means a fat 90 SP for, for Miss Miru. Anyways, the Icicle bar, Ball here. We fought an item, uh, an enemy similar to this. Uh, we'll be able to destroy it. It only has 160 health. It is a water-based uh, enemy, and uh, it's it's pretty easy to destroy. So you don't have to you don't have to worry too much about that. And uh, there is a chest right over here that we do want. This is a good one. This is this is a good one. Promise. Uh, so if we head across here. We can head down, loop around, and grab this chest, which contains a heavy mace, which <laughs> actually is a weapon for Miru on, like, the stunning hammer. So we can go ahead and equip that on her right now. The cool thing about this weapon is that it has, uh, it, it can stun an enemy with, with a given probability. So that's pretty cool. It only raises her attack by five, but hey, what are you going to do? It's still worth it, right? Still worth it. Every stat counts in this game. All right, give me random encounter. And uh, let's be it a rocky turtle or a land skater. Or, you know, it'll be neither of them. Anyways, if we continue up here and try to use this path, Miranda will actually stop us. Hold! According to my memory, the Tower of Flanville should be this way. Oh. Well, thanks for letting me know, but what's, what's this way, I wonder? Fine. It's fine. We don't have to go there. What does this sign say? Right to the the tower of flanville up to the snowfield warning slide oh all right well i guess we'll go down here i don't know why she was yelling at us like that it's like geez just relax oh hello friends also item oh, i love items right there we get a gushing magma Ooh, hoo, hoo. that'll be fun to use we'll actually keep that item for the boss fight and we get finally two rocky turtles these are both earth elementals 560 health and they have a 2% chance of dropping a guard badge, which isn't that big of a deal because we can actually buy those uh, literally in front, right in front of us. The vendor's right in front of us. Now, these do have very, very, very high uh, physical defense. So magic attacks, stuff like that are going to do much, much, much better. And lucky for us, we do, of course, have Miru in our party. So she could just go ahead and use, use a big old magic attack, but we're not going to worry about that. Now's not the time. We need the SP. That was a really weird fight, and I didn't even get a guard badge. Whatever. 
So the guard badges could be worth farming off of those if you if you can, if you can get random encounters with them. Uh, but I wasn't able to get too many. Hello? Hello? Oh, they're scared. <laughs> they're like, hello? Customers, there's really customers here. I cannot believe it, Brother Sagoon, no. I don't know why they sound like that. Oh, sorry, I forgot about you momentarily. I sell weapons, and I sell items, and we are peddlers. I don't know what their voices are. We must be fake meeting you here. It's such a chance. Why don't you buy something? Come on, think of this as a charity. Uh, so we can buy stuff from them. Uh, Segundo here has uh, uh, weapons, actually, including a Mind Crush, which I believe we already have, and a Battle Axe, which is actually an increase. It, it, it is a good item for Mr. Congo. So we'll go ahead and equip that on him. Uh, 350 gold, so not too bad. We also have a Flamberge uh, for our dear old uh, Rose here. We'll go ahead and equip that on her as well. And we have a bow for Miranda, which poisons enemies with a given probability. The Virulent Arrow. We'll go ahead and equip that with her. Uh, we also have a the Saint Armor, uh, which we we can equip on both of these guys if we so choose. Uh, which I'm going to do, actually, because uh, I, I like having, like, the same equipment. The You know what I mean? Um, uh, the same, like, the, the, the ability to equip it on everybody that can potentially have it uh so that means we're also going to put the robe on both miru and miranda as well uh, just so that they they also have something nice for them and we also get the guard badge that i was telling you about now this cost a thousand uh it, it's an accessory it rages it raises physical and magical defense power um and it is in it is a thousand gold uh, and it's an accessory that literally everybody can equip it's just one of those that i i i just think there are much better accessories and i don't really see a time where this is going to make or break a fight um so i'm not going to buy any of these i don't recommend it uh potentially you know what i'm gonna buy one um uh, i'm gonna buy one and i'm not gonna equip it this way it's in my inventory and i and i have it um but i just i just don't recommend it. i just really don't think it's needed unless you're really struggling uh in which case yeah okay come back and be a little more defensive but uh, Primero and Tercero are somewhere around. Drop in on them. Well, yeah. D dude, his voice completely changed. What is up with that? Uh, and then we got Quarto here. What do you guys got for me? So we can get some healing fogs, healing breezes, uh, sun wraps it. We don't have any of these items either. So it's, if you wanted to pick those up, you could. Uh, uh, just, just your basic stuff. No big deal. We're actually not going to buy anything because, um, well, he's a waste. At the other place. The other brothers at the other place. What even? What even does that mean? We'll just head down here. I was going to say, once you're... I mean, I I feel pretty good about those purchases, to be honest with you. Uh, even if we're not really going to use Miru or... Uh, I didn't want to go down this one. Thank you. I was like, hello? Let me let me go down. I kind of love this map. I don't know what... I honestly don't know what those purple things are, but I really like them. Anyways, we want to come down here so that we can grab this chest here, which contains a dancing ray yet another attack item that we can use now oddly enough this is so weird to me but dark can actually climb up the ice i listen i don't know why uh i don't know why that is but he can and we need to go this way so that we can get to the final chest that is here which actually has a very very good item for us the phoenix plume hello uh which is if you remember hello, hello thank you that was weird. Uh, it's a phoenix plume that we can actually equip uh, as a head item on, on certain characters. I don't know what it is about this map, but the purple, like that icicle right there with the purple. Oh, man, that looks just looks so cool. What even is that, I wonder? And, of course, we do have a save point here. I recommend using it. You never know what could go wrong, right? Because if we proceed any further... Well, we'll just run... Oh, hello? Uh, I guess we'll continue on. It sounded like something growled, but I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure it's totally fine. What is this place? Hello? Well, anyways, we can see that there's an item right there. We need to we need to get that. We need to get that. All right, give me the final enemy that I need here. Give me the land skater. Oh my god. I asked you just gotta ask nicely and you can get it. Anyways, that is the landscaper right in the middle there, the penguin. Uh, Water-based enemy, 341 health, and has an 8% chance of dropping a spear frost. And I got Bone Crush! Hell yeah! 100 SP for Kongle. 
and Moonstrike. God, I'm the best. Which one shot the Freeze Knight? Holy bajizums. Now remember, and we got a Fatal Blizzard. Nice. Kongol hit level 28, which is nice. Good for him. Uh, so remember, the reason why I'm using Kongol still at this point is just because I'm trying to build up his SP and his, um, and his additions. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of, uh, this Fatal Blizzard that I just got so that I can go ahead and pick up this Fatal Blizzard. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I would normally be using Hatchel for boss, uh, for random encounters, and I would be using, oh, hello. What is this? What? Congo feels monster angry about we entered here. I cannot imagine what they are thinking to live in such a cold place. Monster don't know coldness. Monster only knows to kill. It wants kill us. Thank you, but no thank you. Here it comes. Uh-oh, here we go. The battle, my friends, against the wild, the angry, the Windigo. Now, the Windigo is a pretty cool enemy. Uh, it's got 12,800 health, and I am going into this boss fight with Kongol, Miru, and Dart. I know, I know, I know, but I don't need you to yell at me right now, okay? What I need you to do is watch me power up Dart and watch me final burst all over the place. Now, what's really interesting about this particular fight is there are actually two enemies here. There's the Windigo, and then whenever he ca he'll actually like capture an enemy or uh, uh, an ally. Uh, and when he does that, we'll be able to attack his heart. And no matter what, we can only do one damage to his heart. However, we can use a Satchet and immediately destroy his heart. Uh, we're not going to do that, but but you can. Um, I also could use a special here. And um, you know what? I'm going to. That was not the best call. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. That was not a good strategy for this fight, but it's a fun strategy and it's what I'm doing. Uh, the reason for that is because I still need to use speed up on dart to make it this a little bit better. Uh, but honestly, it's fine. We can use special. This way his final burst and all that jazz are gonna do even more damage to the Windigo. Um, so it's it's not a huge deal. And also don't forget, he's gonna have his instant fully powered uh, additions and he also has the heat blade equipped, meaning he's going to do even more damage to the water-based Windigo. So having a fire-based special, it, I, I think it's probably going to be more impactful than that speed up would have been. And also don't forget, Kongo and Miru only have three turns as a Dragoon. And of course, we're going to end up using this here. It does, the Windigo does have higher magic defense than it does physical defense, but I'm not too worried about it. And like I was saying, there are two possible ways to defeat this enemy. 2,517, absolutely beautiful. Uh, the first way is to attack it until its HP decreases, right? That is that is the best way that you can end up defeating this thing. Um, or you could wait for it to do what I said. Perfect from Kongo, perfect. Uh, and you can use its, its heart will be there. You can attack the heart four times like a unique monster. You do one damage to it, uh, it dies. 845 out of Kongo's edition. It dies, cool, you move on, right? Uh-oh. Isn't that so cool looking though? Anyways, that's just its magic attack when the Windigo jumps up in the air and uses that. And that will do very little damage to everybody because they're all, of course, Dragoons. And we also have uh, Diamond Dust from our dear friend Miru, but Freezing Ring is going to be better. Uh, and we also have uh, Rainbow Breath, which we are going to use on everybody, even though Kongo's at about, yeah, they're missing a bit of health. So we'll go ahead and use her, her Rainbow Breath here. But yeah, I, so there are very, very easy ways to defeat the Windigo. We're doing this in a little bit, a little bit longer of a way. What's really cool about the Windigo too is it's a Native American mythological creature. It's a it's a, a basically a person that has eaten human flesh. Once you uh, ate human flesh, you would eventually crave it, turn into like this monster thing. So it, it actually seems really cool that this this thing only knows that. This is its move called Ghost Claw. Creates an arm, uses it to smash one of your teammates. It'll do okay damage, not that much because it is a physical based attack. Let's see. 
Puggle's gonna be like, oh, 238. Well, that was actually a lot more than I thought it was going to be. All right, a big fat final burst coming out of Dart. He also has uh, Toss, which is just a smash um, attack that it does. Uh, hostage Turnabout, it will jump over and it'll pull somebody into his chest using his tail. Then that character is inactive until he throws it back, which it will do damage. Any, da uh, any damage that the Windigo receives, that character will also receive. So if the character uh, has, or if, if you if you attack the Windigo at that point and not the heart, uh, it, that'll be bad news bears. But again, a really, really fast way of killing the Windigo is to allow it to capture somebody and then you use a Satchet on the heart and it dies immediately. And that's it, game over. Of course, you could also use really fast characters like Miranda to attack the heart, get it over with quickly as well. Now, here's the problem, right? Miru's now back into human form. Kongle will be soon. Uh, well, I guess she could just go ahead and use a speed up. We could finish this fight by using a gushing magma from her, and that would be the end of it. But we're going to go ahead and actually use a speed up on Dart uh, just to just to do it, just to finish this. We could have also used a speed down on um, on the Windigo, and we'll use a flame shot. This might actually be enough damage to finish the fight. Yes, almost over a thousand damage from a from just it's that's beautiful dart. See what I mean? We didn't need burnouts. We didn't need to go all the way back to Fueno. And we will also get no matter what, this is a hundred percent drop chance, we will get the brass knuckle for our dear friend Hatchel. Heck yeah, buddy. Now, I I have never seen the Wendigo in prison anybody in Dragoon form, uh, but there are reports that he can do that. I've never personally seen it, so I, I don't know for sure, uh, but people have suggested that he can. I'm sure there's a YouTube video out there that probably shows it, and and, and I was wrong, uh, but I've never seen it. Anyways, uh, the other thing that I want to talk about the Windigo that can do is when it does capture somebody, he, he will uh, summon two snow cannons, which only have 400 health. They can be taken out super, super quickly. Um, so I just want to point that out that those those can come out and you do want to defeat those as soon as they appear uh, because it can it can do a lot of damage. Um, uh, the Windigo, when it does capture somebody, it can also drain the HP from them. So you want to you want to make sure that that, you know, that you don't do that either. Right. Uh, the Windigo, uh, I don't know if I said this because I, you know, live commentary, but the heart also only has three health. So you attack it three times and it's dead. Everybody leveling up now. That's absolutely beautiful because probably I mean, we got a lot of XP there. No new additions or anything like that, unfortunately. Oh, we barely defeated. Thanks to that, I got warmed up. Hurry up. We are moving on. The Tower of Flanville is back there. Oh, yeah, we should go. But first, we need to equip our dear friend Hashel with the Brass Knuckle, which raises his attack by six and instantly kills enemies with a given probability. What? Excuse me? Uh, yeah, that makes him very, very good in random encounters, especially if you give him uh, speed boosting things and he goes zoom, zoom, right? Cannot carry anymore. Are you kidding me? Anyways, we can grab this item here, which is a black rain, which I believe might actually be the first time that we might be the first time that we've actually seen that. That attack item. Anyways, we'll head up here. And oh, hello. Look, this is the Tower of Flanvel. It's the ruin where the moon mirror was placed. It's a swirl. Again, this doesn't seem to be built by humans. No, it's not. According to the legend, it was the Wingley's floating fort during the Dragon Campaign. I heard. Uh, this can fly. Wingley's in the past used to have an enormous amount of magic power. Then it wouldn't be strange if this much magic power is concealed in the divine moon objects. For the people of Sergio, for King Zor, and for Princess Emil. No, this is a life or death matter for all of Endeness. That's even more of a reason. We must stop the ambitions of Lloyd here. Absolutely, team. It feels like we're, like, wrapping up something here, you know? 
I don't know, man. Feels good, though. Anyways, we can get another item here in this chest that's kind of well hidden, and we will get the Rave Twister. And then, my friends, we will head into... Ow! A random encounter! Or, you know, we can head into the Tower of Flanvel, which is actually a very, very small dungeon here. I kind of consider it part of the Kashua Glacier. Right here, we can grab an item, which is the Spirit Ring. Nice. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? And we can go ahead and use this path here to use this teleporter. What even, what even is this room? Look at this, you move sideways. How weird. So the way that these teleporters work, which is actually, it looks complicated, but it's actually super simple, is they just shoot straight across the room. Uh, so if we were to use this one, it would literally go right there. Uh, and then, you know, this, this one here would lead right here. Um, it's a very, very, very simple way of actually doing this. So I just wanted, I just wanted to point that out. These, they, they look complicated. They are not. So we can use this to go right here. See what I mean? Very, very easy. Anyways, we want to go ahead and use, uh, this right here. Which will bring us over here. And then we'll go ahead and use this. Which will bring us all the way up. Again, this is a, a fairly simple puzzle. And we can grab a mage ring. The mage ring is really cool. It actually restores your MP every turn. Like the spirit ring increases or uh, uh, restores some of your SP every turn. Anyways, we can use this teleporter here. Like I said, this is a very, very small and pretty simple uh, dungeon. We can use this to bring us straight across since there was nowhere else we could really go. And then we can use this one. The moon mirror is in there. In that, like, pod thing? What? Oh, no. Why is my dragoon responding? The dragoon spirit of the divine dragon is resonating. Lloyd! Finally, we cornered him! Everyone's ready! Let's go! Okay, but first, wait! Hey, where are you going? We have to rescue Queen Teresa as soon as possible. Yeah, but I want to use that. Can I go this way then? Oh, I didn't actually want to use that teleporter. I was just trying to make a joke. Anyways, I've replaced Miranda. Uh, I've, anyways, I've replaced Kongol for Miranda, and I've also gone ahead and equipped uh, Miru with the Dancer's Ring and Soft Boots. Uh, and then, of course, Miranda has the Dancer's Shoes and the Magical Ring, just like she has before, and her new her newest arrow, which is, which is very nice. And now we actually want to head in here. Something that I would recommend is putting talismans potentially on people, uh, but we're not going to need that because we're not going to be relying on dragoons for this fight. But there is something that you can do to absolutely cheese this c upcoming fight, and that is to only ever... Uh, change like darts for instance into a dragoon but have the talisman on him and Lloyd will waste every single turn trying to use his instant uh, instant kill on uh, on dart uh oh what is he what is he wearing I appreciate your cooperation what are you whoa Lloyd here they are. Hey. That's all of the items. I just got all three divine moon objects. Now the world will be reborn into the utopia that Emperor Diaz and I desire. The world will be reborn? What are you talking about? You should know, your majesty. The evolutionary plan created by the great will Soa and the flow of evolution woven by the divine tree you humans are merely the 106th in the plan. And we, Winglies, are the 107th in the plan. I desire the 108th evolution. I desire a utopia created by the last species. And for that, I will use every conceivable means. Lloyd, that's all you want to say? I'll let my sword say the rest. Shall we finish up? And finally, we get to do battle against Lloyd. And, of course, he does still have the Dragon Buster, so if we transform into a Dragoon, he will one-shot us. Unless, of course, you have the Talisman equipped, in which case, ha <laughs> ha, he won't. Anyways, right off the bat, we are going to go ahead here and use a power-up on Miranda. This is, this is, this is the way we're going to do this fight. 
my friends. Actually, you know what? We're going to throw a speed down on Lloyd first with Miranda. How's that? How's that feel? Perfect. Lloyd is super fast, so we want to make sure that we uh, stop him from being super fast. Uh, so we'll use the power up on Miranda. You guys know the drill. And uh, hopefully Dark gets a turn. Yeah, perfect. And he's going to use the speed up on Miranda. Absolutely beautiful. You can do this, my friends. Lloyd, no element, has 7,000 health. But we are going to go ahead and use... Well, good thing I saved a few of my dear spark nets because we are going to use a spark net on Lloyd and hopefully do a tremendous amount of damage. Two hundred and eighteen percent. We one thousand one hundred and ninety nine. Not as nice as I would like, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. And of course, she has another turn. So let's go ahead and use another spark net. Two hundred and twenty six percent for twelve hundred and forty three damage. Miru has a turn to attack. Now, he does have very high evasion because, well, you remember from back in Lohan. Thanks, Miru. You did a whole 78 damage. We'll go ahead and use Dart. To do absolutely nothing. I still have the Heat Blade equipped. I actually forgot to unequip that. All right. One more Spark Net. Two hundred and thirty-two percent. Very nice for twelve hundred and seventy-six damage onto Lloyd. So we're gonna have to switch up. We're gonna have to use some different magic attacks here. Uh oh, here we go, Lloyd. What do you got for us, buddy? What a cool attack! What even is that? This, my friends, is called the Wingly Purification Attack. Absolutely beautiful. Did you see how much damage that just did to our entire party? Absolutely, absolutely wild. Of course, he is in... He is in red, uh, red, uh, yellow health, but we're not, we're not, we're not going to end there. No, no, no. Instead, we're actually going to go ahead and use a trans light on Lloyd. Five hundred and ninety damage. Definitely better than the seventy that she would have done. Miranda's going to go ahead and use a dark mist on Lloyd. Two hundred and thirty-two percent for eight hundred and fifty-one damage. Oh man, he is in red health now. Uh, something that I do want to point point out here is that the divine dragoon spirits. Uh, he's not actually a dragoon right now. He just has this weird armor that he found. It's possibly just like a old wingly artifact. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, oops, and I thought I would just point that out, but it is not, it is not, uh, it is not a Dragoon at all. So I just, I just, it's very, very important that you know that he is not a Dragoon. is gonna finish this up with a Thunderbolt. Let's see, is that enough damage to finish the fight? I don't think so. Absolutely not, as he goes into yet another attack. This one is just a normal magic attack that he's going to do against us. He, he uses his, his rune, just like Linus did. We're looking fine, actually, for health. I think we can get hit by pretty much anything and be totally fine. Uh, but we're going to... I think that I don't have any other single attacks here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hope that this meteor fall will be enough to finish off Lloyd. Five hundred and thirty-four damage. Not much, but is it enough to finish the fights? 
No, it is not. Looks like yet again, we are getting the Wingly Purification, which does a ton of damage. There are a few other attacks that uh, the Wingly Armor form of Lloyd can do. The Multi-Strike, where he attacks a person five times, that's his most basic. Uh, Dragon Impale, which is the one where he just... It, it just kills someone if they're in a Dragoon. Uh, his Magic, which we saw the Purification, which we're seeing right now in a, an attack called Energy Barrage, uh, which he creates this giant sphere. Uh, it fills it with energy and then throws it at you and it, it hurts everybody in the party. That is going to do a bunch of damage and potentially now we would actually want to use a healing rain on our party, but I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. Oh, geez. Oh, it didn't even matter. Oh, geez. Oh, he moved. He dodged it. Wait a minute. Yes, the music. What even is that armor? Oh yeah. Wink. No, oh. Please forgive Lloyd. What? 12,000 experience for that fight. 300 golds. Of course, that means everybody is leveling up. Also, I'd like to point out that Miru did hit Dragoon level 4 during a random encounter and just now hit level 30 uh, and learn the Cat's Cradle new edition. Miranda is also level 30. Kongo got a level there, but that was, that was it. Why would Wink do that? You fool. Albert, don't you need to be upstairs? Lloyd killed Lavitz. I trust Dart with everything. He will bring us the right answer. I agree. I feel the same way. Ditto! Hmm. Why? Why did you shield me? It took many people's lives away for my own ideal, the Divine Moon Objects. I used you, even if it's the truth. The fact that you saved me is still true. Besides, your death won't solve anything. Shauna was taken away. What? What did you say? By the man named Emperor Diaz. He told us to bring the three Divine Moon Objects and Lloyd and come to Velweb. Hmm. Emperor Diaz. Finally, he has begun to take action by himself. Now, take them to him. Even without me, my utopia will be built by Emperor Diaz. I completed all my tasks. Now, I have to settle up for what I have done so far. Kill me, and go to Velweb. I dedicate my death to your departure. Ho <laughs> ho ho Is it out of pity? Your death... ...won't bring... ...anybody who died back. Lloyd, 
I'm gonna make you see it through to the end. Uh, Dart, you left your sword, my dude. Passion. Is this the power that drives them? Very interesting, Lloyd. And I'm assuming Dart tells them the story. Shana was... I see. When we go there, we can reveal the truth about the Emperor Diaz. Whoever he is, he's dangerous. Besides, it's unforgivable to take our dear Shana as a hostage for his utopia or whatever. Exactly! I'll beat him up whoever he is. Queen Teresa, uh, we're heading to Velweb and we need the moon. I understand. I will let you have the moon mirror. Maybe we were in denial, surrounding ourselves with a comfortable life that really was stagnant. Yes, we humans are not the only species, and all species were given life by Soa's plan. Now is the time to remember. The assault of the Divine Dragon, the existence of Winglies, the Divine Moon Objects, the utopia that Lloyd and Emperor Diaz desire. And you, Dragoons. Everything is forcing us to remember it, as if things were manipulated by some great will called fate. Even if so, I don't care. I will take Shauna back even from fate. Miranda, you are one of the Dragoons. Go with Dart. Discover the meaning of the fate given by Soa. And finish Disc 3. Look at Lloyd hanging out with what is happening right now. Can I ask you one question? Yes. Why did you save Wink twice? I had no reason for doing that. I see. Did Lloyd just join our party? Like, what is up with that? We acquire the moon mirror, the moon dagger, and the moon gem. But we aren't done yet, folks. We need to go all the way back to the save point here in the Tower of Flamville. Yes, yes, I know Lloyd just joined us, but he is not actually in our party or anything like that. Although that would have been swell. And I remember back in the day thinking he was and being so excited, uh, but he's not. It is a giant fib. They fibbed, they fibbed us, okay? So, just wanted to point that out. Anyways, we want to head all the way back. To where we, uh, basically right before we fought Lloyd. When I was like, oh, I didn't really want to go. Because, don't forget, Miranda stopped us from going that way. Uh, you can also, uh, go up back into where we fought Lloyd. Uh, if you so choose. There's no reason to. I don't believe there's any items or anything. It's just like a cool, a cool little area um, that we haven't been able to see before. And we also picked our sword back up. So that's good. Anyways, just wanted to point that out. Uh, but the real thing that we want to do woo, swoop, is we want to, well, you could use the save point, but we're not going to just yet. We're going to use this teleporter. Oh, hello. Huh? My name is Faust, the commander of the super mobile fort Flanville. Below is the land of Taboo. Nobody is allowed to pass through. If you would like to stay alive, go away at once. Uh, what is that? Uh, what? I'm just gonna grab that therapy ring there and and leave because I don't I don't know what that is. Now. I actually went and saved real quick, but if you'd like to remain, you fools! Wait, what? What is this? Okay, wait, I need <laughs> Remember all of those, remember all of those, um, all of those stardust that we've been collecting this entire game? Well, they're actually needed so that we can defeat this guy here. You who disturb my rest, walk away or you will lose your life. What? Excuse me? 
So you actually do have a chance to run away from... Oh, you missed. Oh, you missed again. Oh, oh, you did not miss with that one. Yeah, do you see how fast he is? This is Magician Faust. Uh, you... You, uh... Well, you can't kill him. You'll do no damage to him right now. No matter what you do, you... You just won't. He is completely invincible until you have all 50 Stardust. And even once you have all 50, he is the hardest boss in the entire game. He is purely optional. You do not have to fight him. Uh, we've kind of talked about him before, but it is Magician Faust. Don't worry. Uh, I saved right before this. We'll be back. Uh, although he's missing Miranda every single attack, and I don't really know why. He's actually doing legitimately nothing to Miranda. So <laughs> I don't listen. I don't know why that is. But anyways, so you can flee from him. Uh, he actually gives you the chance to flee. He literally says, like, if you don't turn back, I'll destroy you. So we can, we can actually just run away from him. Our swords cannot reach. What is going on? Yeah, indeed. Indeed, Dart. Real problem there. Anyways, that is going to be it for this episode. Apologies if it was really long. Um, this was a big episode. There was a lot that I wanted to show. I didn't want to cut up the Cashua Glacier in the Tower of Flanville just because Tower of Flanville is actually so small. And actually, from here on out, we have a very, very small uh, uh, window, a very small window to actually go and backtrack a bunch to see a bunch of missable scenes now that we have defeated Lloyd and he is currently with us now that we've got the moon gems. Uh, now that Shauna has been kidnapped, all of this stuff means that there are a bunch of missable scenes. So in the next episode, we're actually going to backtrack and do all of that. Um, but in this one, uh, we're going to we're going to end it here, and then and then I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot. We did two whole boss battles. We took down Lloyd, which is a very big deal. Actually, the fight went very smooth, which I'm happy of. Uh, and uh, and I I think that'll do it. Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, never give up. Never surrender to the wingly Lloyd.